And there's so much food out there that's positioned as vitamin rich and nourished, right? Enriched, fortified. You went into that. And I love this quote from, I believe it was someone else had said it, but you know, they're basically akin to animal feed designed to fatten up livestock for humans, right? And yeah. can you go into why is it that enriched and fortified are really BS terms for just, you know, nutritious junk food in a sense that in the end isn't going to be good for you? Yeah. It, it, well, so the thing is, is that fortifying junk food with vitamins and minerals doesn't make it a healthy food, right? right. And and that's the key. Um, but we do have a chapter in the book on how basically fortifying refined grains allowed people to not get sick on them and lose weight. It allowed them to have just enough of satiety to overconsume them. So farmers have known this for over 100 years, that if they simply give their cows refined grains, they will end up getting sick, they'll get peptic ulcers, and they will become basically uh, anorexic and they won't gain fat. But by simply adding vitamins to the feed um, would allow them to overconsume and thrive and get very fat. And so the same thing is being played out on humans. We've taken refined grains and we've fortified them with B vitamins in particular, which allows us to not get sick, to, to not get, you know, the, the stomach ulcers and the fatigue and the anorexia. And it allows people to overconsume that junk food. And so really it's the fortification of grains that allows people to thrive just enough to really overconsume them. Yeah. It's, it's really sad because you see a lot of people look for the fortification. They look yeah. for those, you know, vitamin extra added and everything and think that's healthy. And right. I think that's a big part. People have this misunderstanding of what is healthy food. And that's, True. you know, part of what you're trying to change here with this book. And, you know, I wanted to go into that because you have something called the pretty simplistic obesity fix challenge yeah. and goes over six points. Uh, can you talk about those and, and how really this challenge is not that difficult if you just stick to these six. Yeah, I mean, one of the things is to eat about one to 1.25 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass. I mean, really, that's where a lot of your long-term satiety is going to come from. Um, and eating quality foods, whole foods versus processed foods, those two things right there is going to give most people their bang for their buck. Um, eating a moderate amount of food. So there's something called Hari Hachibu that they practice in Japan where they only eat till they're 80% full. Mm -hmm. And I th think that's key too, is that people just eat to the point where they're just completely bloated and they're just completely full. And that's not what you want to do. You want to eat to about 80% fullness. And what can help people out too is portioning out their foods. Um, it's not calorie counting, but you shouldn't be throwing a huge amount of food on the plate because you may end up subconsciously eating eating all that. So it sounds very simple, right? Portion out your meals, only eat till 80% fullness, eat whole foods, eat a high protein intake, eat fibrous foods, which are low calorie fibers. When you pair fiber with protein, you get the initial satiety of the fiber. You get the long-term satiety of the protein. And that's really the magic bullet to weight loss is pairing things like um, asparagus and, and Brussels sprouts or, or broccoli with lean meats and, and things like pastured eggs. And you're, that's going to give most people their bang for their buck. Shouldn't we also be eating slower? I mean, isn't that part yeah. of it? Because the, the yeah. garolin that shows you whether you're satiated or not takes about 20 minutes or so to kick in and really tell your stomach and stomach may be already overfilled. So right. I feel like this idea of people eating, even when they say they're eating healthy, they're just eating it quickly on the run, not focusing yeah. on the food at all, not taking time to chew it. So putting pressure on the digestive system to do more work. And then we overeat, we don't even know it, and we're really tired afterwards. Shouldn't we be able to see things as, hey, let's sit down and eat this slowly? Isn't that part of the fix also? 100%. Yeah. Um, even studies have shown that eating more family meals and socializing when you're eating has been shown to lead to less obesity and, and an increase in satiety. And a lot of people are just scrolling on their phones and eating and they look down at their plate. The food is gone. It hasn't even registered in their brain that they've had a meal because they're not focusing in, on what they're actually doing. And so, yeah, being distracted and eating, like eating while watching TV or, you know, kids eating while playing video games, that's the worst thing that you can do um, for leading to overeating.
Yeah. It's a shame whenever you see that in a restaurant, right? Like just the kid yeah. and just scooping it. And I realize just going and then going <laughs> over the parents' plates, like, wow, you really overeat easily that way. But you know, p- part of this whole book, a lot was on what to eat, diet, things like that, looking at those others. But of course, exercise is a portion of that and your movement and everything. 